Welcome to the Gothic Lore series, in which we will dive into the world and history of our favorite game. Since Gothic underwent several retcons, retroactive changes in the continuity of the story, we will also speculate a bit about certain topics. Today, our journey takes us into the hazy swamp of the Psionics. Welcome to the Brotherhood of the Sleeper. In the southeast of Corinus Island, in the Valley of Mines, where the mountain's river meets the ocean, a thick swamp spread. It was in this semi-subtropical region where the Brotherhood set up camp and quickly established themselves among the other factions of the colony. The heart of the camp was in the northern parts, where a temple was once built into the steep and rocky cliffside. The courtyard in front served as a gathering place for the inhabitants. It was here where the novices listened to the sermons of the gurus, praying to their slumbering god. At the edge of the temple, the marsh stretched out to the southern mountains, bordered by the ocean in the east and by a lake to the west. Under the cover of the tall trees, the sect constructed primitive shacks made out of wood, which were covered by large leaves, sealing them off from the rain. Once they ran out of housing space, instead of expanding into the dangerous swamp further south, they built a second level in the trees, reinforced by stills and connected by wooden footbridges. Some of the trees were carved out and used as dwellings mostly by the gurus or higher ranking novices like Lester and Yoru. The northeastern part of the camp was the commercial quarter, where the wheat distribution, the alchemy lab and the forge were located. Right across the center, sitting on top of an enormous fallen tree, a platform served as the training ground for the mighty Templars. Along the edges of the village, piers and barricades were constructed to keep an eye on the creatures drawing closer to the camp, like the massive swamp sharks and vicious bloodflies. At night, magical ore torches illuminated the hazy air with a bluish hue, guiding the believers on planks through the swamp. Around five years before the barrier fell, a man called Iberion left the old camp when a mysterious voice led him to the edges of the colony. When he arrived in the hazy bog, standing amidst the tall trees, the voice guided him to an ancient temple, promising freedom, a way out of the prison. Among these ruins of unknown origin, he founded the Brotherhood of the Sleeper. Soon they discovered the swamp weed growing within the warm and moist environment, which had a relaxing effect on them when consumed. Some of those who were blessed with spiritual power even received visions of their god when they consumed the herbs. Others saw the deity in their deep sleep when dreaming. The influence of the sleeper was so strong that Iberian harnessed its powers, yielding a new powerful kind of magic, different from the spells of the mages of the realm. Only those with the strongest minds would be taught by their master, becoming gurus of the Brotherhood. Others who possessed an iron will and physical power would be appointed to the camp's first line of defense, the Templars. As the years passed, they established a lucrative trade with the other camps, spreading the swamp weed all over the colony. With the camp steadily growing in numbers, their spiritual leaders began working on a way to increase the mental potential of the novices for a big invocation in which the sleeper would show them a way into freedom. Korkalom, the right hand of Iberion would soon discover a more efficient way to raise the mental power of his disciples. Deep within the mines of the valley, the creatures known as Minecrawler possessed mandibles which contained a potent secretion which could be consumed. 
Kalon then struck a deal with the old camp, sending Templars into the deep recesses of the mine to defend the excavation and to kill the crawlers to gather this precious liquid. When the Nameless One arrived, Kalam had a vision of the Sleeper, who revealed a more valuable substance which was yet to be discovered. With the eggs of a Minecrawler Queen, the hero returned and the invocation was initiated, which resulted in the death of their master Iberion and the split of the Brotherhood. While a few members stayed in the camp under the lead of Korangar, most of them followed Kor Kalam in search of the Sleeper and their long-awaited freedom. In the Orkish Temple, beneath the Valley of Mines, the Nameless One encountered the Mad Kalam, killing him and his apocalyptic disciples in the process. Before the Sleeper got banished into another dimension, he called for the servants of Beliar, the God of Darkness. This last scream echoed through the Valley of Mines as the barrier collapsed and drove most of his former worshippers insane. The majority of them ran off into the night, confused and plagued by strong headaches. Some of them, like Lester, Fortunu and Korangar, however, kept their wits and somehow escaped the swamp. The others weren't fortunate enough to withstand the call of their master and succumb to his influence, becoming the hooded figures we know as the Seekers. Their ultimate goal was to stop the Nameless One in his efforts to get rid of the new menace which now spread over the valley. With powerful magic, and dark curses, they positioned themselves all over Corinus Island and even got hold of the Eye of Enos, a powerful artifact which they destroyed in a ritual in the Northern Mountains. However, it is not known what happened to the swamp camp itself, since the Orcish invaders built a giant wall, isolating the eastern parts of the valley. The main resource of the sect was, with no doubt, the swamp weed. The plant was so popular around the other camps that the business relations prospered in the following years. While the sect already had a strong business with the old camp, they soon began exporting it also to the new camp, trying to gather new customers among the bandits and mercenaries. It is speculated that they got ore and some food in return, since alcohol was not allowed among the Brotherhood. Food-wise, they were not dependent on the other camps. Soups made of roots and stew containing parts of the Minecrawler were a common dish among them. The abundance of different herbs and plants in the bog is an important indicator for them being mostly self-supporting. The bulk of the Brotherhood was made up of novices, and since the camp lacked a proper workforce, like the prospectors in the other settlements, their duty was to support the camp in different ways. Some of them had to harvest the wheat in the swamp, others had to process it, smashing the herbs and delivering them to the alchemy lab, while higher-ranking novices were sent out to trade with the other camps or recruit new inmates for their cause. Their main task, however, was to pray and strengthen their belief, increasing their mental capabilities to eventually connect to the sleeper. But not everyone in their rows was a true believer. Some of the new arrivals just joined for the weed and for the fact that there was no mine to work in or guards who extorted them with protection money. The lesser novices were easy to identify by their garments. All new arrivals in the camp would wear a simple piece of loincloth of khaki collars and a turquoise sash with bandages as their footwear. Medium novices wore a complete robe of the same colors that also covered their chest and had a big collar decorated with symbols and runes. Aspirants who were on their way to become a guru or a templar were recognized by one additional pauldron made of studded leather. 
Most of the novices fought with one-handed weapons like axes or maces. Known for their iron will and prowess in battle, the Templars were the guardians of the Brotherhood. Only the sturdiest of the novices could join their ranks and learn the ways of the blade under their leader Koran Gar. However, they weren't limited to physical damage. The mightiest of them were even able to learn the psionic magic that was used by the gurus. The Templar's purpose was to guard the camp from intruders and creatures alike and were located in the periphery where swamp sharks and blood flies would frequently attack. Once initiated, every Templar was given the title Gorna and would train on the Korangar on the big platform high among the trees. With the deal that Iberion and Corcolum struck with the old camp, some Templars were deployed to the old mine to hunt Minecrawler for their secretion and to reinforce the defenses of the excavation in return. The initians of the Templars were a simple garment, a light harness, braces, boots augmented with steel and a battle skirt which was made of leather stripes. The Templars' medium armor was still revealing most of their bare chest but was reinforced with pauldrons and braces made out of steel. The High Templars were completely covered in plate and leather armor alike. Heavy pauldrons, boots and leg armor made of steel, decorated with ornaments. They also received a thick studded leather chest piece protecting their vital organs. All Templars were trained in the art of heavy two-handed swords, some of them even using crossbows, while others who were gifted enough used the powerful psionic magic. When a novice was chosen to ascend to the ranks of a guru, the title of Baal was bestowed on him. Those Baals were the religious leaders of the camp who would preach to the novices and guide them on their spiritual journey. They were masters of the psionic magic, a new form of magic which would rival the spells of the circles of water and fire. They were able to move things from afar with telekinesis, burn their enemies from within with pyrokinesis, call upon the forces of the wind and could even take control of weak-minded humans. This magic was very versatile and made them cunning foes in battle. The Guru's robes, also in khaki colors and with turquoise ornaments, were long ceremonial dresses with a large green collar covered with runes and ancient signs. The color of the leader's collar, however, was scarlet and he wore an amulet depicting the sleeper's mask, the sign of Beliar. Iberion, the leader of the camp, was advised by two persons who gained the title Kor. Korangar, leader of the Templars, and Kor Kalam, leader of the gurus and novices. The first bit of speculation is about the origins of the temple in the swamp. The architectural style doesn't match with the orcs, from which we have plenty examples, like in the graveyard or even the sleeper temple. Since it is said that Iberion was led into the swamp by the voice of the sleeper, it is possible that this temple was once built by an unknown civilization who also worshipped the slumbering god or his master, Belior. A different possibility could be that the same civilization who built the monastery on the cliffside could have created the temple as well, since both are in the same general area in the east. The safest guess, however, is that it once belonged to the people of Yarkandar. Madarion of the Circle of Water confirms that the pedestals on which the Foki were found during the time of the barrier had the same architects as the structures which are found in the ruins of Yarkandar. These people were not isolated, since we find their traces even in the northern parts of Corinus. This could mean that they once spread over the whole island. After all, I think it's safe to exclude a royal origin since the king's troops had no business in the swamp. 
Another bit to speculate about is the magic of the gurus. Their magic was different from the spells of the water and fire mages. Although they had also destructive spells in their repertoire, some of them were more versatile. The gurus knew for example how to manipulate the mind and could even take control over one's body for a short amount of time. They were also able to put humans into a deep sleep or reach items from a distance. We know that the gurus, most likely Iberian or Kalam, received this magic from the sleeping god to teach it to their brethren, but with the banishment of the sleeper, this magic was lost. Or was it? Fortuno in the bandit camp in Yarkandar confirms that the knowledge about the magic is lost with the gurus, but there are still spells like sleep and wind fist prominent in the time after the barrier. The hero also comes across a certain alchemist in Corinus who created a spell called Oblivion, which is very similar in its nature, manipulating the mind of a victim in a way that it forgets recent actions. The theory is that even though the sleeper got banished, he still holds some connection to the world, albeit in a weaker way, and allows magicians to cast these spells. A further interesting part of the camp is the fact that every new arrival gets cut bald. Their lack of any head hair is never explained, but we have some real life lore that would explain this procedure. In many religious groups around the world, monks would cut their hair, sometimes all, sometimes just a small circle on the top called a tonsure, as a sign for their devotion to their respective gods. We can see examples of this within the Christian religion like the Franciscan order, or within the Chinese Buddhistic order of the Shaolin. However, hair was associated with sexuality, therefore it was cut to represent an untainted form of devotion to the religion. Just like in the real world, the Brotherhood could have cut their hair to signify the renunciation of the worldly aspects of life, striving for spiritual ascension. After the barrier fell, the valley was overrun by the orcs. Many of them came from the southwestern mountains, but some arrived on war galleys, landing on the eastern shores of the colony. The latter raised a wooden wall which secluded the east to hide their strength and serving as a retreat for the hordes. There is only two possible locations where they could have landed. The beach beneath the fog tower and the swamp further south. So it is more than likely that the orcs used them both as a beachhead, but since the sandy beach beneath the tower is relatively small, it is expected that they rather used the Brotherhood's camp as their primary landing area, and therefore constructed their main base of operation in the swamp. A last small theory of mine is about the Brotherhood's leader himself. I think that before he received visions of the sleeper, he was only known as Baryon. There is no evidence for that, but since every guild except the novices have their own title, it is very likely that Baryon also adapted one, but a unique one that marked him as the leader. So that's it with another entry in the Gothic Law series. If you have any other theories, please let me know in the comments. I hope you learned something about the Swamp Dwellers, and remember, may the sleeper awaken.